Jesus Christ who calls us here to worship this morning. Let us come into the presence of the Lord. Let us sing with joy. O oh, worship the King, all glorious above. Please stand. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. Let us turn now to our holy God in prayer. Please have your order of worship in front of you. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you. You favor us with true freedom. We give you thanks. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son. Help us to leave behind all that hinders us and to focus our eyes and hearts upon him. Dearest God, we want to follow the paths of your kingdom. Grant that through Jesus Christ we may do so. We pray to you, Holy Three in One, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are God forever and ever. Amen. And now taking just a moment to talk about ways that you can join in the ministries of the church, be sure to look at your bulletin and all of the activities going on. There are usually some of the same ones going on each week. And know that you are welcome into any committee work uh, with session uh, guidance. So please look into the ministries of the church and find a place if you have not chosen one yet. There are announcements in the bulletin that I would like for you to be sure to see. Things that, uh, there are also things missing from the bulletin. We have had an addition of a concert, piano concert on Thursday. I believe it will be at seven o'clock. You might want to be looking for that. It will be on our
our Facebook page sometime in the next day or so. Pray and listen for God's call to you. Sometimes it's just in the reading of a little notice in the bulletin that you say to yourself, I think God may be calling me to work with children. Maybe I should volunteer to be a Sunday school teacher. We will soon be starting a new year, and I just urge all who have ever taught, or even if you have not, think about it. We have children of all ages who need your leadership. And now all of you who are visitors, and I do welcome you, especially those who are visiting today, know that you are welcome, and if you would like to learn more about our church, let me know at the door after the service, and I would be so happy to have a time with you sometime in this coming week and tell you more about our church. I would ask that you would also notice that our uh, bulletin includes all things that we do, all of the hymns and the liturgy, and we do participate in this church. The congregation takes part throughout the worship service. Let us now turn to a time of confession as we prepare our hearts for God's beautiful word. Let us with boldness approach the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Please join now in the unison prayer of confession. God of grace, we forget your mercy. Our hearts are blinded by our devotions to things of this world instead of to you. We confess our sin to you. Come to us in mercy. Lead us truly to repent. Set us free to serve you as agents of your reconciling love in Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. who are forgiven through Jesus Christ. Let us not fail to forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you today. And now greet one another from the pews and offer the peace of Christ as you can from your remote greeting.
you for your wonderful greeting of one another. We have Melody this morning to come down and hear a little word or two about God, and you may listen in also. And all of you who are online, you children, if you are uh, with us this morning, thank you for being there, and this story is for you as well. Well, Melody, one day a man named Moses, someone you know about because you've read a lot about Moses, asked God what his name was. And God said, well, I am who I am. And if the people ask who sent you to them, you can just tell them I am sent you. Well, that's a strange name, isn't it? And so the writer of this book decided to make a pretty little graph that shows many different names we call God. And I know you're a good reader, so I'm going to let you help read these names. The first ones, maybe, that we should read are the three names that we have for God always. And that would be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I just love how you are learning so much. Your faith is going to just keep growing. You're getting a good foundation, Melody. So let's look at some of these. We know Jesus is one of the names that we use for God. God sent Jesus into the world to show who God is. Here is the first name that we heard, I am. And that is something that God told Moses to call him. But here are some more. What does this one say? Can you read that one? Protector. Protector. And what about this one right here? Father. Father. And this one right here. Oh, that's, uh, that's a difficult one I gave you. That's El Shaddai. And that is, not many people know that one. So thank you for pausing a bit so I could look at that and, and help you out with that one. Uh, what is this one? Um, healer. Healer. Well, we know that God is a healer. So here we have about 20 different names for God. If you were thinking about God, you might think of rock. We've talked about that before, haven't we? And redeemer, that's another word we use for God. And we do know God protects us and does heal us and redeems us when we're bad. We can ask for forgiveness. So I'd like to pray about that. Let's stand up and have our prayer together. Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for the beautiful day, for the beautiful day and, the blessings that we know. and the blessings that we know. Help us to remember, Help us to remember the, many names the many names that we call you, that we call you because you are many things, because you are many things blessing, our lives, blessing our lives and helping us, and helping us in times of need. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We pray in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you, Melody.
Let us pray. Prepare our hearts, O God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, and that hearing we may also obey your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first reading this morning is from the Old Testament, the Book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 22 and 22 to 33. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. And the second reading is Psalm 30. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. A reading from the epistles, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 through 15. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in the generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had too little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. Be to God. 
our next hymn, Come Sing to God. Please stand, we'll sing verses one and four. Please be seated. We turn to our gospel reading, which is from Mark, the fifth chapter. We'll read verses 21 to 43, a story within a story, an important text for us this morning. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came and when he saw him, <clears throat> fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hem hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd, and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him, and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha, come, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her 
something to eat. This is the word of the Lord for us today. Thanks be to God. No thing and no one is exempt from God's redeeming act through Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. We, like Jairus, that temple leader in the story, might wish to fall at the feet of Jesus in prayer. And we, like the unnamed suffering woman, might not wish to bother Jesus face to face, but rather just reach out and feel his garment, touch his cloak, only to fall at his feet in joy when we realize that we too are worthy of his healing. Every created thing included every human being, every one of us, is now, at this very moment, being redeemed, being healed by the Lord our God, being reconciled to God through Christ's saving act. Christ gave his life in that self-emptying, self-denying act of the cross. He knew the pain he would have to endure, the humiliation that he would suffer, but he also knew the truth. He knew he had to fulfill what his father had sent him to do. And he knew the divine plan would change the world forever. Jesus knew that his healing grace would be for all people, for rich and poor, for able-bodied and weak, for church people and for those who are not a part of the church. Remember the words of Peter in his first letter, important words for us every day. By his wounds, we are healed. Perhaps this is what Paul meant when he wrote in the letter, the second letter to the Corinthians. You know the generous act of our Lord Jesus, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. But what kind of rich is that that Jesus invites people to become? Well, I think this story in Mark helps to inform us as we ask that question. This is a moving story of two very different people whose lives intersect on this day. They're both in human need. And when we ask the question, does God have time to hear all our prayers? Does God really see everyone who needs healing? Or when we ask, are my prayers enough? Am I worthy? Am I good enough? for this healing that I know God grants. When I pray for those who need healing, or when I pray for myself, when I am lost and hurting, well, Jesus answers those questions. He always has time for those who come to him for healing, even now. He has time. These lessons clearly represent what Jesus was, is, and always will be all about. The one who never stops giving, the one whose saving grace never stops saving. It is in his love that we are healed, in his poverty that we're made kingdom people, in his strong hands we are held when we are afraid. In all the recent stories we've read together in Mark in these last few weeks, we witness this kind of healing that Jesus offers. As he begins his ministry, you may remember, it's a preaching moment in the synagogue, and suddenly there is a man possessed by an unclean spirit who interrupts the service. Well, Jesus rebukes the unclean spirit, not the man, and Jesus heals him of this demon that has caught hold of him. Then, as Jesus and his disciples enter the home of Simon Peter and Andrew, maybe hoping for a little rest, you know what he finds, you may remember. Simon Peter's mother-in-law is ill, and so he's called to her bedside and heals her. Then the whole town that night gathers at the door of the house of Simon Peter. Jesus heals until well into the night the next morning, we read that Jesus rises early and goes off trying to find a quiet place to pray. 
But the disciples search for him and say, people are looking for you everywhere. They need you. They want you to come back and heal them. Just last Sunday, we read that Jesus teaches all day and then tries to rest in the boat as the disciples row over to the other side. A storm alarms the disciples and they wake Jesus with their cries and their accusations. Don't you care that we're about to perish? It sounds like us, doesn't it? Where are you, God? Do you not care anymore? You're not coming and helping me when I cry out to you. Jesus gave the disciples faith lessons that day. Jesus always hears. God always knows our prayers. No, they're not always answered immediately and not always the way that we hope they will be answered. Perhaps the most important lesson that Jesus gave the disciples in the boat that day was to trust, to know that he is always present and does know about storms that cause disruptions in our life and certainly cause us to feel threatened and alone. And here we are on the other side of the sea. The boat has reached the other side and there is yet another crowd gathered. Jairus is right there in the front, the leader of the synagogue. Not caring what anybody thinks, he falls on his knees before the one he thinks might be able to help. And there, too, is the suffering woman. The two stories are wound tightly together by Mark. First, the full range of people who can and do receive the blessing of Jesus we see in this story of two separate people. And we learn it is not just the poor and it's not just the rich. Jesus offers his healing blessing to all. This story, in this story, faith plays a role in the blessing. Do you believe Jesus wants to know? Show me then that you trust that I can do what you ask me to do. Third, these stories witness to the outcome of faith, that what Jesus gives to us who seek his healing is wholeness and restoration, shalom as only God can give. Look at these stories again, both needy people, the synagogue leader and the sick woman who doesn't have a name. They will prostrate themselves before Jesus. Jairus falls immediately there on the shore. As soon as he sees Jesus, he wants Jesus to know that he does have faith and he's calling Jesus to come and help him, help his daughter. He begs Jesus to come at once, and Jesus agrees. And they start to, toward the home of Jairus when certainly, suddenly this other need arises. Someone touches him. He knows that power has gone out from him. The suffering woman has sought only to touch the cloak of Jesus. She had faith that only touching his clothes would make her well. And indeed, it did. It was true. The bleeding stops. She has been physically healed. The woman approaches Jesus to confess she is the one who had touched his cloak. In fear and trembling, she too falls before him, as the synagogue leader had by the sea a few moments earlier. Jesus responds, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. With those words, Jesus passes to her that peace that only he could give, that shalom, the wholeness that comes as a result of her faith in him, as a result of her becoming right with God. And then we see people rushing into the scene to tell Jairus that his daughter is dead. No use to bother Jesus any longer. It's too late. Jesus hears and says, do not fear, only believe. We need to hear that often in our lives when things are going wrong and we wonder whether there is a future. Do not fear. 
only believe. These stories remind us of the constant care, even when we can't see it, of God's work alive in our lives as we're being healed of our own infirmities, some physical, some mental, some spiritual, but we are all in need of healing. Do not fear, only believe, Jesus tells Jairus. Jairus did continue to believe, to have faith, and in the presence of Jesus, he had confidence rather than fear. As in the story last week of the storm on the sea, we are called in faith to know that the stories in the lesson today hold promises to us. They are not impossible to believe. These are, yes, stories of miracles, of healing, miracles of bringing back a little child who was thought to be dead. But these stories represent for us the hope that Jesus Christ has given and continues to give. These stories promise the impossible, the healing presence of God in the face of sickness, whether it's ours or that of someone we love. It is ours, this gift that God is giving us in our hearts to have the faith to believe God will heal. These stories promise that healing and wholeness will be ours and they will be available to all people. The promise is for everyone. Jesus has promised to be with us on this journey. This is a fragile life that we lead. We talked last week about the fragile boat in which we travel. Indeed, we do. This fragile little boat in which we journey in life is one that needs the power of God and the wisdom of God as the captain of the little boat that is our body. Jesus has told us what to do and shown us what to do, promised that through prayer we might know more fully and trust him more deeply in the one we acknowledge as our Savior. We know God's grace is extended to us and to those we love and even to our enemies. The healing grace gives us access to joy, to purpose in this time and in eternal life. We are, every one of us, being healed right now, even when we don't know that we need to be healed. We need God's healing hands, and they're upon us because he knows that we need it. It is true prayers for healing are not always answered as we wish them to be and certainly not always as quickly as we hope them to be. But in Jesus Christ, we are given the power and the authority to help others to believe. And we are given the faith in our hearts through the Holy Spirit to believe this without fail. God is with us wherever we are and in whatever need we have. In Jesus Christ, we know that we will live again. Joy in the new life that God has given us in Jesus Christ. Shalom, peace given by God, peace that passes all understanding, is ours now and always. I think the story reminds us that we are called also to touch others as Jesus allows the woman who needs healing to touch his cloak. We are taught to touch others, and we can do that and help others to take that faith that is offered to them into their hearts and to show what it means to meet Christ every day on the way, to fall at his feet and to pray to him for healing, for salvation, for hope, for joy. We may boldly interrupt him anytime, anytime, and ask for that joy, that mercy. We have been invited to do that, and we have been urged to do that. So I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you will do that. In the days ahead or anytime, you know that it's important to pray for your own healing and for that 
of someone you love. We can do that. Thanks be to our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together. Gracious Father, thank you for giving us the faith in our hearts, the belief that you are with us evermore, that through Christ you have given us forever and ever an opportunity to be your own, to live forever in your light, and to bring others with us. Help us to touch others and to teach what it means to be touched by Christ. Bless us in this day to be good disciples. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now let us stand and say what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We turn now to our prayers, asking God's blessing upon us, our community, our church, and churches all around our community and in the world and God's blessings upon all of his creation today. So let us go to God in prayer now. Almighty God, guide us by your spirit. Let our prayers serve your will for us. You have made all things in your divine wisdom, and we know that in your love you save us. We do pray for the whole creation, you made it and you pronounced it good. Let it be so. Let all your children on earth live in a way that allows them to flourish and joyfully to sing your praises. We are your church in this place. Keep us in faith and service. Teach us when we forget that you have entrusted to us your word and you expect us to live in its light and to share that light with the world. As we meet hostile forces opposed to your truth and your way, give us strength to stand strong against them. You bear the pain of the world, and we know that. And we thank you that we may lift to you the names of those who are in pain today, some from grief, others from sickness, loss, some from injuries, disabilities that prevent them from wholeness. Heal your people, we pray. Hear, heal, be near. We have brought needs into the sanctuary this morning, each one of us. Hear us in a moment of silence as we lift those needs to you and lay our hearts at the throne of your grace and as we name before you all of those for whom we are praying. Merciful God, we thank you for hearing our prayers. We trust your word. We accept your spirit into our life to help us to pray. We love the Lord Christ, who teaches us the joy of obedience. Bless this fellowship of seekers and believers. Bless your churches all over this community and those who lead them. And bless churches all over the world, especially today as they gather to worship and give praise to you. 
Bless the children everywhere, in the world and especially of this community and of this church. Lead us who are older to model the kind of faith and trust in you that will lead them to lead lives of service. And Lord, hear now as we turn to the prayer that Christ has taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is time now to bring our tithes, our gifts, our offerings, and as we do so, let us remember that God blesses us bountifully, and let us give joyfully. And thank you to all who are joining us online. Thank you for your gifts in helping us to continue our ministry in this great church that God has put in this place. Let's pray together. Merciful Father, glorious Father, Lord of all glory and grace, we thank you for the blessings of this life and for all that you've poured upon us. We give back to you some of what you have given to us, and we do so gladly and enjoy. Bless these gifts and help us to use them in a way 
that is according to your will. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before our final hymn, I would just say that um, I hope that all of you will plan to be here on the 4th of July. We have some spectacular things planned as uh, a worship service and a service of thanksgiving for who we are as a people. So please uh, try to be here next week. We will have our, some members of our Boy Scout troop here, and uh, three of them are New Eagle Scouts. We will honor them. It's a perfect day uh, to honor them. So please be with us again next Sunday. Our final hymn, we're going to sing verses 1, 4, and 5. How firm a foundation. Thank you everyone for being here. Every one of you made a difference this morning. Go out knowing that the Lord has blessed you in this place and equipped you to meet whatever he puts in front of you in the days to come. And as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and evermore. Amen.